This is one of my old running shoes, one of my old, dearly beloved white running shoes. I've logged a lot of good miles in the shoes. One day I uh, broke a shoelace and had to go to the store and replace the shoelace. Suddenly, something startling happened when I put the new shoelace in. It looked like this. Notice. All of a sudden, it came into my awareness that I didn't have white running shoes. I had very dingy running shoes that I could no longer call white. The whiteness of the shoelace called attention to the dinginess of the shoes. And you know, the white shoelace has no power to transform the dinginess and become white again. All it can do is call attention to the way that this falls short of the standard of whiteness. Now believe it or not, I think of this when I think of teaching the book of Romans, especially Romans 7, because Paul has some interesting things to say about the law in relation to believers. The law has a role to play in the life of the believer, but it may not be the role that we often think. We think sometimes that the law means I just have to try harder to measure up. And if we don't measure up, we just try harder, crank it up, try harder, try harder. Paul says that's the opposite way to go about things. When we try to do that, the law has, has a way of arousing the opposite response in us. There's part of us that says, this is right. I should align with God's will, the God's will expressed in the law. Uh, the other part says, there's a little rebel streak in me that says, uh-uh. Now, why is it that when we see a sign that says, wet paint do not touch, all of a sudden we have an overpowering urge to go and touch the wall to make sure that that's true. We weren't thinking of the wall at all until something said, do not. <laughs> and the do not summoned up the rebel in us that said, oh yeah, I will. That's what the law does. It, 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 it gives an opportunity for sin within us to, to rise up and challenge that. Paul says, this has become a real problem for him. There's a battle going on inside. That which I want to do, I find myself not able to do. And that which I say I'm not going to do, I end up doing. What is it? He, he's talking it from the vantage point of a believer. He says, gosh, what is going to get me out of this futile treadmill? Fortunately, he doesn't leave us there. The segue is to Romans chapter 8. Therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and of death. For what the law could not do any more than the shoelace could transform the shoe. What the law could not do, weak as it was through our flesh, God did, sending his own son to condemn sin in the flesh that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in him. That's good news because it says it's not all up to us to try harder. God has done for us what we cannot do for ourselves. He's done it in Christ and he gives us the blessed privilege of participating in Christ's life and what he has done for us. That's the Christian life, participating in Christ. Christ in us, we in Christ. And you know what? That's awfully good news. That's freedom. <laughs>